Hello my delicious co-creators, Lilu here in Galisteo, New Mexico with Navjeet. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I, I could, I love this place. We're at the Light Institute right now in this beautiful sphere. And this is a meditation room where actually Chris Griscom every week does, she does her knowings here. Mm -hmm. And this Sunday is a meditation. Sunday meditations. And it's a very, very special place. Beautiful energy out in the desert, uh, outside of Santa Fe, New Mexico. And it, she's a pioneer. She's a pioneer and she created some amazing things here that are inspiring, that have inspired millions mm -hmm. of people around the globe. So I've interviewed already Chris, but today it's with you. Um, and I would love to hear, because you've participated mm -hmm. in building this sphere. Mm -hmm. And I want to hear all about that. Sure. How was it built? Well, basically, when we first started um, planning this whole building, we were talking to our students and we wanted to have a campus for our school. And we wanted to have something that was um, new, something that spoke of the future, that was connected to the cosmos. And so we love the idea of spheres because they like planets and we like the <laughs> idea of having a, a ball, a sphere, that you could meditate in. And just imagine this, we just imagined what it would feel like to be in this floating, because if you go outside, it's not just plonked on the bottom, mm -hmm. it's actually a full sphere. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we were excited about it, and that's what we wanted to do, was to have something that when people came here to meditate, that not only were they going inward mm -hmm. through their inner awareness, but as soon as they saw it visually, that it triggered something, because it does remind you of the future being able to see these different kinds of buildings. And we built the, this part of the campus using straw bale, we used natural materials. Um, again, because we wanted the energy to be something that could help to further open you up on the inside and at the same time be very calming to the outside, to the senses, to the body. So you could be in a really perfect, harmonious space within yourself mm -hmm. to access the information, to learn, to excel. Mm. So that's, that's it how it is. It does feel good. It does feel very peaceful as soon yeah. as you get here. Yeah. Different than a, a pyramid feels too. Because yeah. you could have built, you could have yeah, built a pyramid. Yeah, that's true. You could have built. And you know, I think that's, that's a really good point because nobody's ever said to us, you know, how come you didn't do a pyramid or something? <laughs> we wanted a sphere because it, again, it's, it's something, there's something magical. There's something complete. We love circles. You know, our lives move in circles. The universe moves in circles and it spirals. And so we wanted, and, and this is part, you know, if you see this rest of the buildings, it's like an arm, and then there's this sphere on it. And there's the other one in the other, other room, which was um, to be the world room. And the idea there was mm. to provide a sphere like this, but with information with, you know, especially now. I mean, we, this was years and years ago when we didn't have the same kind of technology. You look like a baby. I can't believe you were a part of that. How old are you? I'm 42. 42. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So how long ago was this built? This, oh my gosh, this was probably built... You were a baby. No, no, this isn't that old. This was built 98... Okay. Ninety nine. So it was later it. because she yeah. created. When did she created the institute here? The Light Institute came into being in 1985, I think, yeah. if I get my dates right. So, and originally the Light Institute used to be in uh, um, in the village of Galisteo, okay, and the adobe buildings. Uh huh. And then later they moved over here. Yeah. yeah. And then first we had this as as a school, and then after the school completed its round of uh, projects and programs, the Light Institute moved over here. Mm. Yeah, so it's a, it has a pretty big history already. So how did you hear uh, about uh, Chris Grisco? Well, how did you come here? <laughs> I came here in 92 and um, I had just finished getting my law degree in England. I'm, I was living and growing up in England. I was born in India and lived back and forth between India and England. And I just finished getting my law degree and it just didn't feel like it was something that I was drawn to and in that time and you'd think being born Indian I would know about karma and reincarnation but they were just kind of very peripheral things they weren't ideas that were necessarily lived and embodied by my family mm -hmm. and so I was I was curious on a deep level but I didn't even know how to voice what my curiosity or what my yearning was uh, but I knew that it wasn't law mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I decided that I would save up some money and I'd, I would go on an adventure, I would go looking 
and I saved up my money and my crazy plan was that I'd come out to America and meet some shamans <laughs> and they might be able to tell me, you know, what what's I needed, going on what's here? going on and like, you know, and also not just what's going on, but that I, that I felt, and this might sound big headed of me, but this is how I felt at the time. I felt like I knew stuff mm -hmm. inside of me mm -hmm. that I felt was valuable, that I felt could help, like you're saying, you know, heal, help, inspire. I felt I had those things, little mm -hmm. seeds of that. And I, I wanted somebody to help me to bring them out, help me to understand what my knowledge was, that it was relevant, and that I didn't have to wait until I was a wise old, you know, was an old woman. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I had something and I, you know, very sincerely was seeking someone to help me understand that information. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or somebody to tell me, actually, you're on the wrong, you've got the wrong idea about yourself, you're actually pretty crazy, <laughs> go back to law, you know? <laughs> so, so that's what started my journey and um, I ended up coming across uh, one of Chris's books, Ecstasy is a New Frequency, and I remember reading the first paragraph, my, my friend and I were driving through Utah at the time, and I made him stop the car and I said, I found my teacher. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I could hear her voice and more than anything, her, her depth, I could feel it. And that's when I started my exploration. I called and I found out about the sessions, the multi-incarnational sessions. Mm -hmm. I went back to England because I didn't have enough money saved at that time for sessions. Went back to England and I went and did uh, multi-incarnational sessions in France because there used to be a light institute in France at the time. Oh, I didn't know. In, um, where was it? Mm, it was in the south, mm -hmm. in the south near Bordeaux. So um, went there and did sessions and that's when I was like, okay, I want to know more. Mm -hmm. So I, you start, from there you start healing your karma? You start doing well, some healing? Know, what happened to get you to where you're at now? It, your was, healing it was process. interesting because I, I was, you know, I was at the time, I was 23 years old, 22, 23 years old, 22 I think, and, um, and I thought it's interesting doing these incarnational things, like you see a lifetime, I saw, you know, lifetimes with my parents, my dad killed me, and you know, all that kind of stuff happened, and I thought, well, I'm just making up stories, you know, how is that really going to change? feeling stuck and what do I need to do and where am I in my life and you know having kind of a crisis at 22 but what it did do is is that it totally did change my relationship with my father within a matter of months because prior to that I always felt like I couldn't really speak to him mm -hmm. I always felt like I would choke mm -hmm. if I tried to tell him what I was feeling or what I wanted or where I was at and then after that having seen the lifetime where he stabbed me in the back of my th back of my neck and I choked on my own blood. Now whether that was made up in my own consciousness, it was my subconscious speaking about my relationship with my father, the fact that it came into my conscious awareness mm -hmm. made me go, wait a minute, there is some part of our dynamic where I do feel like he kills me. Mm -hmm. He doesn't give me a chance to say who I am or be who I am. And that's when I was able to reposition myself. It wasn't that he suddenly changed. Mm -hmm. I was able to reposition who I was within that relationship and how I wanted to be. And then I was like, okay, now if that one set of series of sessions can do that, what else can I do? What else is there inside of me that's ready to be released or contacted? That's beautifully said, really. Oh, it's you. one of the most, uh, <laughs> yeah. I love the part that because there's the imagination plays a role. Oh, sure. But in the end, you know, well, you does know, that make that much of a difference? Right. And because you know, we are clearing ourselves from, that's so from right. things we need to. And that's all right. And oftentimes, you know, when I've worked with clients myself, they'll say, well, you know, I'm just making it up. Or, you know, when they're doing multi incarnational sessions, I'm just making it up. What difference does it make? Well, it's interesting what you do make up. What mm -hmm. role do you assign to your father? What role do you assign to your mother? What role do you assign to yourself? What century, what time period do you say that lifetime is based in? Because that will tell us on a social, um, economic, cultural, male-female relationships where you are, mm. where you're coming from, where mm, you're basing your backstory. Mm -hmm. Because that, that reveals to us a lot of information. So when people say, yeah, it's 1600s, I'm a woman, I'm 16 years old, I'm going to get married, I don't like the guy that I'm going to marry, I'm from a rich family. All of these things as, as a facilitator when they're listening are clues mm -hmm. as to where that person's psyche, where their story, what their emotional, some of their emotional um, content's going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, where some of their, bl uh, their blind spots may be. Mm, so you say kind of our soul gets stuck in some 
uh, old patterns or in, well, in some it, time it, line. It, 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 you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you believe in lifetimes or not. Mm -hmm. There are there are just as you said. You know, we get stuck. Mm -hmm. We just bring it right to the present. We mm -hmm. just get stuck. We get never mind what happened in another lifetime. We get stuck in what happened today. Mm -hmm. And so it's how do you disengage yourself from those conversations yeah. because we hold so much value to working conflict out. Mm -hmm. And I and I oftentimes say to my clients, you know, we can spend a long time processing. We could just spend all day, mm -hmm. oh, this and then, you know, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Long time processing. And so at some point we've got to switch the conversation around and say, well, let me see what gifts I have. Mm -hmm. What can I do? What's amazing about me? What's brilliant that I can just start, you know, going out into the world with. And, and I think that's really also another very important part of the work at the Light Institute and the work that we do at the Nijoni School is igniting inspiration, creativity. Mm -hmm. Let me see your brilliance. And this actual sphere design came from one of our students, Laula Fritz, who was a divinity student at the time. And she, with Chris and, and the other architects, designed this whole place and said, okay, this is a kind of thing that's, that's kind of going to be exciting for us mm. as, a, as a student, as for students to come to, for people to visit. And, oh, yeah. so and you're passionate to help kids, right? And yes. Help them. Tell us yeah. about that. Um, I think that, you know, this is how I got to that place. It's like, you know, when you start working with people, oftentimes they go back to their childhood. Mm -hmm. I wasn't seen. Nobody picked me up. I wasn't loved. I was crying. Um, I, I, I saw angels, I felt this. So it was fascinating just to see how often the issues were in childhood. And so that made me really feel like, okay, wouldn't it be great if these children didn't have to become broken? Mm -hmm. Like instead of saying, you know, follow the rules, do this, do that. If we could listen to where they're at and begin to create a curriculum that really nurtured inspiration, their creativity, their holographic awareness. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, I came to wanting to work with young children, um, you know, middle school age ch children, teenagers, because, you know, they're still, they're still, they've still got that excitement and juice and they still can believe in miracles and fabulous things happening. Whereas as you, as people get older, they become a little bit more jaded. They become a little bit more set in survival conversations, pay the rent, pay the bills, da 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 da, da. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you're still in your childhood or your youth, you have the protection or the support of your parents on some level, so you can engage in other conversations. Mm -hmm. And that's why, and I think that, you know, we think about how can I contribute to the world? Well, wouldn't it be great if you could contribute to these children, these young people, and look how many more people you've got contributing then. It's kind of like a pay it forward, mm -hmm. but in a brilliant way. Mm. It's amazing too how we start when we start healing ourselves, we become more children too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I children think, like it's very important. Yeah, I, Chris is very much like that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, well, it's it's you know I think she's like that because she's always been like that. She's kept that part of herself alive. It, mm -hmm. Not that she had to force it. It's just very alive in her. Yeah, and I think that that um, people who give that permission to themselves that it's not wrong to be excited <laughs> or to be silly or to make a mistake or to be curious and fall flat on your face you know <laughs> then then you know then you've still got a very interesting world to live in mm -hmm. it's when we don't think that we have the um, permission to fall or to make a mistake or to be silly that we become very rigidified and the world becomes a little bit too flat then mm. and and you know and it's just, it's, it's, you know, I always think that this is an amazing world that we live in. And um, the more you poke it, the more it'll poke you back. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, go ahead, poke around and see what comes. You know, we do have the skills. We do have tremendous courage and love. Yeah. And, and I think it's wonderful what you're doing. And I've seen some of your, um, on your website, your videos, you always have a great energy, really wonderful, loving, excited <laughs> energy. And I think it's, it's very important that you're doing this and that people are seeing that, not just the information that you're bringing, but the character and the presence that you bring it to the people. Very important. That inspired, happy, mm -hmm. glad to be here, <laughs> glad to know you kind of energy. Yeah. Juicy, fun energy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, what do you think, what does those current times inspire you? What, I mean, where do you think we're at and where are we at? what's possible right now? You know, I think it's, 
it's you know when we squeeze it's a really great time to stretch mm -hmm. and when we are coming into places where we squeeze you also discover how much space there is in there we get a you know when the reason why we're afraid is is that we don't know that part fully yet we only know some aspect of it and so as we get into the squeeze and let ourselves go in there we're going to find actually it's okay it's not terrible it's not terrible and I think it's an opportunity to go even deeper because you know I'm sure you've heard about you know zero point energy that in a tiny little speck of zero-ness mm -hmm. there's enough energy to fuel the whole planet or you know I'm not a scientist but you know that kind of idea well just imagine what zero point energy is in you like mm -hmm. and so you know and not just um, physical energy but emotional I mean that's the, the key right now in terms of psychology and spirituality and everything the emotional arena is the most resourceful arena we have mm -hmm. but it's the, mo the least understood and utilized our emotional spectrum is very small and as we begin to stretch and exercise our consciousness within the emotional side, I mean, you've heard people talking about emotional intelligence, social intelligence, we're just on the periphery of this conversation. And what I mean about emotional uh, resources is that if you, if you feel love, and I say, okay, feel it even more, and feel it even more, and feel it even more, you're tapping into something amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's just emotional conversation and you, t you connect that to your consciousness and then you begin to direct it mm -hmm. you know when you did the board break I think did you do the board yes, breaking yeah that was fun. Guess, guess where you were going into mm -hmm. depth of your damn tien mm -hmm. that's your emotional resource mm -hmm. here I am and boom <laughs> yeah and then you use your consciousness direct mm -hmm. so here I am mm -hmm. and go even deeper here I am feel my being and I think that's one of the coolest things about being a human is we have this little trick called the emotional self and mm. if we develop that and you've seen people who you know like some of the greatest spiritual teachers they're not like hmm they're funny hmm. they're usually really funny and that's how you can tell someone's quite developed is that they have a, a good sense of humor about themselves and life and that they can be very spiritual and very serious but they don't have to be fun. They don't have to be that. They can be funny. They can afford mm -hmm. fun and humor. Mm -hmm. And so, so as you really kind of get into that, hmm, just even that, hmm, it feels good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Here I am. Hmm. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. And now what? And if you could, in, even in a and crisis, then you can laser focus, like board breaking. Exactly. Where do I direct that to? Yeah. In relationships. If you're in, in a, let's say, if you're a, you're a couple or your parent child or whatever. Hmm. Let me. Hmm. Here I am. And not to discount where they are, but let me just connect to myself. Mm -hmm. Feel myself, and then you can hear where they are. They aren't forcing you out of yourself. <laughs> They're just ah, I don't know where I am. I don't know where I am. So I'm going to say all these things. I'm going to say all these things. <laughs> and then if if you can't make sense of myself, I'm going to attack you, attack you, attack you. Because maybe then you can tell me who I am. And then you say you're an idiot. You're a fool. And I'm like oh, maybe I am. No, I'm not an idiot. Or a fool. You see what I mean? They're trying to find where am I? Mm -hmm. Here I am. And so if you start doing that, and you stop and you pull back into yourself, guess what's going to happen to them? Hmm. They've got nowhere well, to yeah, argue. They've gonna, got to go they're back. They're do something else. <laughs> yeah, they're either going to walk away or they're going to get into them, their mm -hmm. center and be present to it. And there's no, that's it. You're done. No more fight. And so I think it's again, it's that emotional. It's not. It's not. It's not something you have to like. You know, do for hours or meditate. It's just come back into your consciously be yeah. conscious to in the moment. Yeah, and, and to your feelings. Where are you? Mm -hmm. Where are you right now? Because if you're feeling all over the place, that's where you are then, all over the place. But if you come back into yourself, here I am. Mm. And, then fe and then express that through your eyes, here I am. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's, yes. it's, it's, it becomes very solid. Mm. And, and I think it makes, I feel good when I feel solid in myself. Mm -hmm. Because I think one, in our new age or spiritual community, a lot of us can kind of really expand out. Mm -hmm. And then we get a bit floaty and then things, you know, drama happens and stuff happens. And we're like, oh no, I'm not good at those things. I'm really good at meditating and connecting to the angels, but I'm not really good at this third dimensional stuff. And people complain about the third dimensional stuff. No, you can be good here too. Mm -hmm. 
you know, if you're and we're in this human body right now and it's glorious yeah it's okay it's something to celebrate yeah yeah it's really okay i mm -hmm. mean even with the knocks and dents and you know all of that it's really okay because i tell you you go to mars and try to live on mars right now pretty difficult <laughs> go to venus i mean i'm just saying like in terms of what the earth provides yeah. and the physical body that we have we've got a really lovely situation mm -hmm. you know and if and if any of you out there who've you know experienced different bodies or different lifetimes as aliens and galactics well just because you're an alien galactic doesn't mean the planet that you live on is easy to live on mm -hmm. you know and so this is a pretty cool deal <laughs> <laughs> I love how you put it together. This is so juicy conversation. You know, I isn't it? it? I mean, think yes. about it. Like our lungs work. Yeah. I mean, one of my most love experiences, the things that I'm in love with. I have these. Um, I have love affairs. So my current. I mean, my ongoing love affair is water, because I'm so. You can drink it. You can swim in it. You can bathe. I mean, look how many things. It's like. And yet, a there's lover. no water around. I know here. And so then, how do you deal with that? Oh, but, but when you do have it, you mm -hmm. know, we have, you know, water to drink. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to the ocean, it's like, wow, mm -hmm. look at that. And then the air to breathe. We just take it for granted that there's, oh, air everywhere, whatever. I'm still going to complain. No, just think about, wow, that you don't have to wear a contraption over your mouth all day long. You know, mm -hmm. majority of us, I know that some people have difficulty breathing, not saying that there aren't people like that. But majority of the people, the way that our body is composed, allows us to breathe. And if you breathe, if you do breathing exercises, you really get mm -hmm. how amazing this body is. Yeah. Because most of the time we're not even breathing properly. Because we're in that anxiety, shallow mm -hmm. state. So if we were to really start breathing properly, exactly, mm -hmm. just letting it come <laughs> in and out, and then suddenly, you know, you start feeling the twinkle of life and the magic and the wonder of it. And you know, it's, it's so we're really composed to be very light-filled mm -hmm. and illuminated at all times. But we kind of just shut down because we think it's too much information or, oh, actually, just that we just, ha we just didn't have the value of it. Mm -hmm. And I think we're coming to a place where more and more people are going to value illumination, being lit from within and being able to see the light outside of ourselves. And so there's some old associations that are being kind of dropped off. Oh yeah, what are those? Like you know that only only a few people can be enlightened. Oh yes. Or that only heal you, themselves or right. All that all that you know um, that only certain gurus or certain uh, masters. Yeah, or, yeah, mm -hmm. all of that stuff. It's kind of boring. I mean, if you're like an upgraded human being, which as we're becoming, then that's that conversation is kind of boring. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, ascended masters, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry. It just it just feels just feels old language it's like reading a book written in the 1500s ye old merry england style <laughs> you know what i mean it's not like yeah. reading what's current and mm -hmm. our current language is very for na for now it's very precise it'll change you know as we're becoming more visual you know 20 years ago we didn't watch videos we read about this stuff mm -hmm. and there wasn't even that much stuff to read about it so as we watch more stuff you know our brain's getting wired differently it's relating to information differently yeah. And, and so we're also, as we're watching, it's a light conversation because it's going in through the optic nerve, different process. And so we're, we're getting used to different light frequencies and beginning to see the world through images and visual. And then as you were talking about imagination, it's beginning to kind of interface on that mm -hmm. level. And okay. some people say we're, we're becoming light beings more and more. Some civilization even disappeared as light beings. So is yeah. that, do you think this is where we're going? Um, are we, you know, it's... I don't think of it as going anywhere. I think it's just for some people. It's going. It, for some people, it's going to be. That's what's going to. What it's going to feel like. For some people, it's not going to feel like that. For some people, it's going to feel like um, the the you know the end of time. So they're getting really ready for the apocalypse, 2012, and so on. So I think individuals are going to have different experiences. Are we, you know, what's the collective experience going to be? Is there going to be 144,000 people who are going to ascend at 2012? Probably not, actually. <laughs> you know why? Because it's not about that. That's old code. Mm -hmm. That's old code. That's the code that, you know, at the time, you know, 2,000 years ago, uh, the time when they wrote the, the talking about the Mayan calendar, is how we interpret that information. And I think that's old code and it's, it's not relevant in the same way at all. Yeah, and it could be a new era. 
<laughs> Maybe, I don't know. But when we, the good thing right now is that when we feel the light and when we bring in light, as, as you're teaching here, yeah. we do feel like we're expanding, we do yes. feel connected, we exactly. do feel, you know, in that moment, yeah. more, more, every, of more of everything. Exactly, and I think, I think where I, I am challenged by the idea of, you know, light beings is that there's an association perhaps that as you become enlightened or light-filled that you're no longer part of the movement of the cycles of life. Mm -hmm. It's not true, you're still part of life. And even as a light being, even as Sai Baba, who um, passed on Easter Sunday, you know, he died of breathing complications. He was a, a supposedly ascended being. I didn't know he died. Yeah, he died. And, um, and so, you know, he still had physical stuff that he was dealing with. Yeah. And so, just because you become a light being, you will not be protected. You can't protect. Because I think some people want to become light beings or relate to themselves as light beings or yearn for that because they think they can't deal with here. Mm -hmm. And that's where I say, uh-uh. Bring, and Chris, this is one of Chris's, one of her biggest messages was anchor the sky, bring it here. Mm -hmm. Over there it's fine anyway. <laughs> it's all hunky-dory, right? Because who needs it there? Because, you know, light, blah, blah, blah. Here. Mm -hmm. You came here. Mm -hmm. And so how can we anchor the sky? How can we, you know, enlighten this reality mm -hmm. with this third dimension, with the body, and have a good old time? That's, what, that's what's exciting for me. And I, you know, I, think, I think karma is very challenging in this world. And, and there is a lot of suffering. And so we, we try to make meaning of it. We try to go through it, go around it, feel it. How do we deal with this? It's, and especially with so much information now. Mm -hmm. So we hear about the world suffering. You know, back in the day when we only had radio and before that only newspapers and before that, you know, somebody coming through your village telling you what's going on. We didn't have as much information about the world. We didn't hear about earthquakes on the other side of the world. And so, now that we have all this information, and the media unfortunately is focused on mostly telling of you know disasters, catastrophes, and so on and so forth. It it's, it it does influence it. We do feel it. We feel the collective urge to help and to heal. And so there's there's a lot really good stuff going on. And, and as you said, you know maybe it is pushing the healer in us to come forward. And I think that as the healer evolves, that can, everything evolves, mm -hmm. so as the healer energy evolves, guess what you become? Creator. Mm -hmm. So we're moving towards creator, creation, yeah. and not the and old exciting. idea. Yeah, yeah, not the old idea of God. I, oh please forgive me, will you do this for me? Angels, help me, help me, not that kind. Always and on not, the outside. Yeah, not the co-creator. Mm -hmm. Okay, you and me will do it together. Will you agree with No, not that kind of creator. Unabashedly, here I am. Mm -hmm. That's it. Here I am. And that's and that's that's what the cosmos does. He says, "Here I am." And 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 life and molecules and atoms bounce and collide and glow and we participate in that through our consciousness. Mm. What a beautiful, inspiring conversation. <laughs> Thank you. For Thank you so the much for sharing your time with me i loved it and you share brilliantly your wisdom so oh, thank you thank really you. got your passion and i'm sure there's more than just words that are going to go through this for yeah. people watching it's, it's also yeah. on an energetic level yeah. that we are yeah affecting oh yeah the it's, planet, it's, so. it's you know i i would say that essentially you know just don't be afraid to dance play even if there's all this stuff going on don't don't be afraid of the magic inside mm. of you Fun! Yeah. I love that! <laughs> Magic! Yes! Much Thank love, you. everybody! Thank you! <laughs> Thank you! Bye-bye, beautiful co-creators! Bye! Bye.